Welcome into this week's edition of the AHSA Weekly. This is your weekly inside look at everything going on with the Alabama High School Athletic Association. I'm John Holder. Coming up on this week's program, the AHSAA's David Holtzberg has put together the top 10 plays from the state basketball finals in Birmingham. We'll take a look at that top 10 countdown. We're also going to continue looking at highlights of all the state championship games as we'll be looking at classes 5A, 6A, and 7A. And also this week, we've got some legendary players and coaches from Alabama high school basketball history that we'll be speaking with from the Legacy Arena in Birmingham at the state finals as well. All of that and more coming up on this week's AHSAA Weekly. Home making you sick? Ox Foundation Solutions can remedy any mold or mildew problem in your home. Get a free estimate from Ox Foundations. It's time to get strong. OxStrong.com This is the AHSAA Weekly. We're going to take you back to the Legacy Arena in Birmingham to the AHSAA 98 State Basketball Championships. David Holtzberg of the AHSAA has put together a top 10 plays of the entire tournament. And here are the top 10 plays from this year's state finals at the Legacy Arena. Green Garden has made a run. Made St. It. Luke's has had an answer. The answer is from the seventh grader, Ace Austin. Ace Austin leads all scores now with 11 points. Forcing the turnover at the other end. Austin quickly across the timeline. In the corner, Macy Reedy. Green Garden, lots of problems. Back out to a nine point lead. That's Ace Austin, and that's what she. Lewis gets it in. Shot from half court by Davis is good. 12 after three. We'll be back with our live coverage of the AHSAA State Finals 7A boys. Who takes the inbound pass. Going to launch a long one off the back of the iron. No good, but another rebound for Lynette. Oh, and Jamie, oh my goodness. Cameron Boozer went up above two to a really bad pass. Another steal from Calhoun. Here they come back the other way. And JD's going to take it all the way. My goodness gracious, how did that go? Ooh, look at this. Six of 40. They are now seven of 44 look from the this. field. That's amazing. So he goes up, doesn't switch left. Look at that. Brings it back down. Hit him. 7 1. Uh oh. Uh oh, is right. County. Hello. Hello, Brundage. So, man, Bernie, look at the nice little touch pass by Hobdy. We've been looking for it all day, and it was there. It's easy when you got leg. Cut off. Gets it out over here. Murphy stole it. Showtime coming up. Here he comes. One-handed jam. Oh, it's come. One, two, one, one. Full court pressure getting ready to be applied. But you're right. He can palm the ball and flush it with the ball. Chance opportunities on offense and rebounds. I think that'll be a key stat to look out for as this game rolls along. And the dunk by Will Shaver. Quickly back down to Barnes. Out of oh. the first by Smith. It takes a hard fall. And we just hope that... Play. There's a steal. Hobby always feeling passing lane. She kind of snuck in there, and she'll take it herself right here. Good scoop up. Play up by Hobby. You here, watch the... Pick by Hogby and takes it all the way down. Langford not foul balance. And they lob it into Langford, guarded very closely by Hobby, and she steals the ball. And she goes down and finishes. Great play. Inside the 2A boys. Davison pulls up. Three point shot. He nails it. We'll be able to take a look at the replay here. You will see the clock in, in conjunction as Davidson knocks down the jumper. And I... We'll take another look here. Davidson step back, knocks it down. Ball goes in. They pull 1.1. WOTM is the television provider for all Alabama High School Athletic Association championship events and special programs. WOTM is your home for the Super 7 football, state finals basketball, baseball and softball state championships, the AHSAA Weekly Show, 
and WOTM also produced the first ever football playoff show, Super 7 preview show, and reclassification reveal show. Your exclusive home for all things AHSAA is WOTM. Contact your local cable provider to request WOTM to your channel lineup. We are back on the AHSAA Weekly. During the state finals in Birmingham, we had a chance to catch up with a legendary coach and a legendary player from Alabama high school history. We're talking about Coach Wimp Sanderson, of course, the legendary basketball coach at the University of Alabama, who also played his high school basketball up in Florence, and also Bart Heitz, who played college basketball at Mississippi State, but he was also a great player with the Winfield Pirates here in Alabama. We caught up with these two men to take us down memory lane with some great memories of state high school basketball. We're proud to have Coach Wimp Sanderson, a long time at University of Alabama basketball coach that we all know and love, but also Coach Sanderson played in the 1954 State High School Basketball Tournament. Coach, tell us about that, that year. Well, that was uh, actually a great, uh, fun year for me. I think going to the, to the state tournament from Coffee in Florence was probably one of the big thrills in my basketball life to be able to play, go to the state tournament. We, uh, Coach Hayden, Hayden Ryder was our coach, who later on was the head coach of Alabama. We went down and we played Pell City. First game, uh, Bobby Skelton, who was the quarterback for Coach Bryant. The first year Coach Bryant came back to Alabama, was playing on their team, and we were fortunate enough to uh, win that basketball game. And then we had to play Carbon Hill. Carbon Hill had a bunch of old guys, had the quarterback at Auburn, and then they had some really, really good players. And we were going to play the 9 o'clock game. And so Coach Riley said, now, we need to get there real, real early so that uh, uh, we can get the clock the second half. There's going to be only one clock, and it's going to be on the far wall, and we want to, we want to shoot away from that clock, and then so we'll have the clock the second half in case, case the game goes down to a one, one or two-point game. We get there at 7.30, and Carbon Hill's already there. <laughs> Carbon Hill... Carver Hill got the end of the floor they wanted. They got the clock the second half. I don't think they need the clock the second half. They had a had a very good team, and Carver Hill beat us. And so the ironic thing about all that is that my my first year to coach before I went to Carbon Hill, I mean before I went to Alabama was Carbon Hill. So it kind of kind of kind of a different uh, take on all that. And even more irony, coach, you got to Alabama, <clears throat> and for many many years. Uh, you were the, your, your your program was the official host of the state championship. Yeah, it, it really was, and we did a, I think a decent job. You had you had uh, a lot of teams come in there just to one place. Didn't have that many classifications, and I uh, really had some great basketball teams and some great basketball players. A lot of football coaches who now play uh, coaching now played basketball back then. Vince Dooley played then, and uh, so it was uh, it, there was some really terrific. Uh, state championships that came out of the Foster Auditorium and Foster Auditorium was a really uh, uh, a famous place back then. I, uh, I, I, I uh, had access to a window uh, where I could go to the window and look down at the entrance to Foster. And I'm one of the few people still alive that saw George Wallace standing in the schoolhouse door. Uh, which was uh, Finest Gaston was our SID, and uh, it was a very interesting and historical time in the, in the state of our in our state and, and in the nation. And uh, I haven't I wasn't right there, but I was looking right at it. But roll it roll it up ten years later, <clears throat> and you had a major role in in bringing some of our greatest athletes, regardless of color, to the University of Alabama to play some of the best basketball we've ever seen? Well, we sure did. We were, we were fortunate enough in 1978, I guess it was, to get Wendell Hudson. And then from then on, we got the T.R. Duns and the, the Reginald Kings and the Leon Douglases and uh, yeah, we just go on and on and on. I, I, Bug Johnson's, a lot of players. And um, we were very fortunate when I was had the job to, to have a lot of good players. That's what it takes. But uh, when we crossed the color line in, in that year with, with Wendell, uh, it became a, a real mark towards us having great teams, and we had great teams. I'd like to introduce Bart Heights, former Winfield High School star guard, also Mississippi State outstanding basketball player. Has some great memories from our very, our at the the very beginnings of our uh, state basketball championships here at the BJCC. Uh, Bart, welcome to our show. Thank you, thank you for having me. It's always uh, always good to talk to legends. Oh yes, that's what I say. Well, Bart, tell us a little bit. Tell us tell us your favorite memory of playing in the in the uh, state in the state finals here. 
Um, it, it probably was before the game, um, and I would compare it to even you know playing in the collegiate Final Four. It was because I think the game had gone late. Seligent had gone into overtime and won the game against I think it was St. Paul. And I remember it was about ten o'clock at night. It was it was the second year the tournament had been at the BJCC. And when we we ran out, uh, it was like nothing I had ever. It was the first crowd roar that just really ever made my whole body shake. Um, and that that memory, you know, a couple of shots that were made in that game, uh, especially in the semifinal game against Hobel, um, it didn't end like we wanted it to. But just the whole the atmosphere was it really prepared me for what I was going to see at the next level a little bit. Um, but we, uh, yeah, against Fultondale, uh, I'll never forget that that uh, the game plan was to was to keep me out of the middle of the floor. And, uh, and, and make sure that I didn't go create from that arena. And they just started fouling. We were in the bonus. And it's not, it, I've told people for years, it's not hard to score 52 points when you shoot 26 free throws. Um, it makes it very easy. It's hard to shoot 26 three free throws, though. <laughs> it, it may be hard to shoot 26, but it's not hard to make, uh, to, to make 24 of them. You've got to make your free throws. But now, speaking of that, you were a point guard for mm -hmm. Winfield High School. You were an exciting kid. When you went on the floor, you really were excited to be here. It was exciting times. Mm -hmm. R.C. Hatch was excited. They were chest oh, bumping yeah, each man. other with great plays. Uh, their crowd was here. Mm -hmm. uh, Winfield's crowd was here. Neither one probably knew where the other was located. Not at the time. Uneven floors got you rolling? Ox Foundation Solutions has the expertise and the know-how to repair cracks wet basements and crawl spaces, and uneven floors in your home. It's time to get strong. How strong? Ox strong. Get a free estimate from Ox Foundations. We are back on the AHSAA Weekly, continuing to take a look back at the state finals in basketball at the Legacy Arena. And we're going to take a look at the state championship game highlights now in classes 5A through 7A. We'll begin with class 5A girls, a tremendous matchup between Charles Henderson of Troy, who came in undefeated, ranked as the number one team in the state of Alabama. They come in and 28-0 taking on a very good Madison Academy team out of Madison. You see Destiny McGee, number 20 on the inside with a block transition game on the other side. This was a game that came right down to the wire. You see McGee with another rebound and a put back as well. This was a team that uh, really battled hard on the inside. And then on the outside, that's Libby Privet with a three point shot for the Charles Ford Madison Academy. We'll get to the second half though. Again, a close game. This was a two point game most of the way. The Arrow Jones, that is the daughter of Dinesia Jones, the head basketball coach at Charles Henderson. She was the MVP of the tournament. Charles Henderson trying to win a state championship and also complete an undefeated season, trying to go to 29-0 as you see the steal here. And here's Charles Henderson going back the other way. Jones putting up a shot from the outside. There's a three as Charles Henderson pouring it on from the outside once again. Charles Henderson, great three-point shooting. They had a tough player to deal with with McGee, number 20 on the inside. Her presence was felt all day long. She had 20 points and double figures on rebounds as well. But Charles Henderson won the 5A Girls Championship, completing an undefeated season, going 29 and 0. As you see Coach Jones there with a hug. Charles Henderson of Troy beating Madison Academy out of Madison, 50 to 48, to take the blue map back down to Pike County. 5A Boys Championship game. Boy, this was, we had some great matchups going on here. And this is Fairfield taking on center point. Fairfield, the Purple Tigers there in the purple. R.J. Perry, remember this name. He was a dominant force on the inside. He is six foot six, weighs 285 pounds, going to play football for the University of Tennessee Volunteers. And to be honest with you, the folks from center point, they had a good team. But they really had no answer. Big matchup problem on the inside with Mr. Perry. There's Perry right there for the turnaround. The put back off the miss is put back in. 6 6, 285 on the inside. You see him turn around, left handed shot, misses a put back, put in there. He was a tough force to deal with for Fairfield on the inside. Fairfield came in as the number one team in the state in the last ASWA post. Center point, kind of the Cinderella team of this tournament. Led by Jordan Chapman. See Chapman here at number 23 with a pull up 10 foot jumper. But they came in only with a mark of 16 and 14. 14 losses, 
going into the state championship game. As we said, kind of the Cinderella team trying to knock off number one, and they gave number one all they wanted right there. You see Mr. R.J. Perry not only with the rebound on the inside, but the strong outlet pass, the wrong football pass all the way to the end of the floor. You see him on the inside, the post up, and there's not much you can do with a 6'6", 285 pound post up on the inside. Fairfield was a close game, but Fairfield won in the end. 50 to 42 over center point. R.J. Perry was the MVP of the state tournament, the big guy on the inside with a monster game. And Fairfield takes home their first ever boys state championship in Class 5A boys basketball in Alabama. We moved to Class 6A, Class 6A girls. We had Hazel Green taking on McAdory. Hazel Green looking for their third state championship in a row. Coach Tim Muller's team from up in Madison County has been the dominant team in Class 6A girls over the last several years. They've got a fantastic team. Farrah Pearson, you see her right here, number 34 on the inside. She's a good ball handler. She's also good posting up inside. You see Pearson here, she was the MVP of the 6A girls tournament. But McAdory, a team that really came out of nowhere this year, Jemiah Tyus is a player that you're going to hear a lot about. Tyus, the consummate point guard for McAdory. McAdory had never been in a state championship game in either boys or girls basketball. And not a lot of folks at the beginning of the season paying a whole lot of attention to this McAdory team. But with Jemiah Tyus leading the way, they had a phenomenal season. Kind of came in as the underdog out of nowhere into the Legacy Arena. And they gave this very experienced and deep Hazel Green team all they wanted. But it was Pearson on the inside. You see Pearson making the move to the basket foul for an old-fashioned three-point play. McAdory would not go away in this game, though. This was a McAdory Yellow Jacket team from Jefferson County there in McCullough that gave Hazel Green all they wanted. Hazel Green wins it, but this was a game, again, even closer than that six-point final score as Hazel Green beat McAdory by 640-34 to to claim their third consecutive Class 6A Girls Championship, a low-scoring game, but an exciting game. Tim Miller kind of building a 6A girls dynasty. You see Coach Miller there up at Hazel Green. Hugs and smiles as the Trojans win their third consecutive Class 6A girls championship. 6A boys championship again. It was an all Jefferson County affair. This was a great game between Bessemer City and Huffman. Bessemer City again, one of those teams, a little bit of a Cinderella team there in the purple. Uh, this was a team that had double digit losses, but uh, they gave uh, Huffman all they wanted. This was a big crowd, a raucous crowd at the Legacy Arena, as you can imagine, too. Jefferson County Schools, one from the east side, and Huffman in the city of Birmingham, Bessemer City on the west side of the county. Just a tremendously played game here. Again, the height on the inside by Huffman, as Huffman had uh, just a tremendous three-point shooting on the outside, taking it on to the inside. But Bessemer City, the Purple Tigers is a team that would not go away on the inside, a team that uh, was very good and very competitive. This was another great Class 6A basketball game. All the games during state finals week in the state championship games, even the games that were double digits were close throughout, as we mentioned. As we go into the second half, this was one of those games, too, that was very close right down to the wire. Huffman with the steal going the other way. The foul on the other end, the old-fashioned three-point play. Huffman with a lot of great athletes, a lot of great height on the inside. But Bessemer City the same way. Bessemer City loaded with athletes. And again, giving Huffman all they wanted in this class 6A boys championship game. But in the end, you see the leapfrog there. And the 6A Boys Championship goes to Huffman as they beat Bessemer City by a score of 56 to 48. Coach Steve Ward picking up a state championship for the Huffman Vikings. When we come back, we'll take a look at the 7A Girls and Boys Championships, two games that came to the very end of the last second of the game. We'll take a look at both of those games next on the AHSAA. WOTM is the television provider for all Alabama High School Athletic Association championship events and special programs. 
WOTM is your home for the Super 7 football, state finals basketball, baseball and softball state championships, the AHSAA Weekly Show, and WOTM also produced the first ever football playoff show, Super 7 preview show, and reclassification reveal show. Your exclusive home for all things AHSAA is WOTM. Contact your local cable provider to request WOTM to your channel lineup. Back with the AHSAA Weekly, going back to the Legacy Arena in Birmingham to the AHSAA State Basketball Tournament, the State Finals, 7A now, 7A girls and boys. Right there is the story of the game. You just saw that first shot from Sarah Ashley Barker, MVP of the tournament, a Georgia signee. The daughter, of course, of legendary Alabama quarterback Jay Barker had a phenomenal game, MVP of the tournament. Also, you had uh, Mazden. She was a phenomenal player also for Spain Park. Spain Park and Hoover, an all-city of Hoover state championship game. Hoover, of course, won the state championship last year. Spain Park won it in 18. Hoover won it in 17. In 17, they beat Spain Park by four in overtime. So these teams were guaranteed to have the state championship stay in the city of Hoover for four years in a row. Where would it go to, though? Would it go to Spain Park or would it go to Hoover? It was all Spain Park getting out to a monster lead in the first half. Really, Spain Park could do no wrong. But in the second half, Hoover kept around, kept staying around. And then Sarah Ashley Barker fouled out with two minutes and three seconds to go in the game. They were without the MVP for that last 203. And that is when Hoover made a tremendous run. You can see the athleticism here by Barker. Barker doing it offensively, defensively, block shots, assist, three-point shots, taking it to the inside. But Hoover would not go away whatsoever. But at the end, Spain Park was able to hold on in a game that came down to the last seconds, and Spain Park beat Hoover. So Spain Park has won two. Hoover has won two. They split the last, the last four. Class 7A girls championships, the last shot by Hoover. No good at the buzzer. Spain Park wins the 7A girls championship 47-44 over the Hoover Buccaneers. A great 7A girls game at the Legacy Arena. Following that, the nightcap on Saturday night on Championship Saturday was a number one versus number two matchup between Mountain Brook and Robert E. Lee of Montgomery. Mountain Brook in their customary neon jerseys here. Lee of Montgomery came in with only one loss. That was to Pinson Valley. You had Mountain Brook with two losses, but neither one of those came to a team in the state of Alabama. They were undefeated in the state of Alabama. They had lost to Grayson, Georgia. They had also lost to Olive Branch, Mississippi. And you're seeing right here, Mountain Brook plays a lot of players. It's a very deep team. Colby Jones, the leader, though. Jones, 29 points in the semis. Didn't have that many in the finals, but still had a huge game. A big inside presence. Really a player that can do it all for Mountain Brook. But this was a Lee of Montgomery team. They called them the Ann Street Air Force. They're on Ann Street in Montgomery. They had 152 dunks coming into this game. This was a high-flying team that came in at 32-1, and one, a phenomenal basketball team, but they had never won a basketball state championship in school history, trying to win their first one ever. This was a game that came right down to the wire. Two well-coached teams, Bryant Johnson at Leah Montgomery, of course. Bucky McMillan had won five state championships at Mountain Brook, trying to win six. But it was Duke Miles, great player for also Demarcia Davis, another great player for Lee of Montgomery and Jamari Smith. Smith had a great game as well for the Lee of Montgomery Generals, getting balanced scoring all the way around the horn. There's Jones kicking it outside. Came down to the very end, but Lee of Montgomery beat Mountain Brook by two, 40 to 38. Mountain Brook trying desperately to win at the end of the game. Had a couple of shots they got off. But Leah Montgomery, Lewis getting the rebound at the end of the game. And Lee won their first ever state championship in boys basketball as they beat Mountain Brook by two, preventing a four-peat. Mountain Brook was going for their fourth consecutive state championship, but denied by Leah Montgomery as the Generals win it by two, 40 to 38. And that was the last game of a great week of basketball. And we're going to roll out this week, taking you back to look at all the games, all 42 games, all classes. We're going to take a look at 1A through 7A 
the state championships right here as we close out this week's edition of the AHSAA Weekly. We'll see you back here next week. It's time to get strong. Hawkstrong.com. There was never plan B, just a path I'm taking. Breaking on through on the road I'm making. I knew one day I'd get my shot. So here I am to give it all I got. This is the big time, ready, say go. Work so hard just to make this show. Under the lights, it's time to shine. Get your game face on, cause this is the big time. This is the big time. Time. This is the big time.